Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. In Psalms 118, verse 24 says, this is, the Lord, this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, we are to be joyful for another holy Sabbath day has come into our lives. Although we could not be together physically, praising and worshiping God, we could still do it through this modern technology. Before we proceed on with our program, let's bow down our heads for a word of prayer. Our most gracious, dear loving Heavenly Father, this morning we come to thee with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you, thanking you, Lord, of all the blessings that we received from you during the past days of this week. You have been so gracious and faithful to us in spite of our sinfulness. Please forgive us. May we always be worthy to receive the blessings that you have prepared to every one of us. Uh, please bless our worship today. And may the Holy Spirit always dwell in us so that uh, our minds and thoughts are always focused to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, our song leader this morning will be April Pagan. Garden of Prayer will be uh, Welda Marquez. Offer Tory Reading and Prayer by Darlin Benjola. Children's Story will be Gillian Bal Balbastro. Our speaker for today will be our very own pastor, uh, church pastor, Leo Mar Macare. A special number will be rendered to us by Rudalyn Tomas. This will be the sequence of our program this Holy Sabbath day. May we all be enriched spiritually as we worship God in the beauty of His holiness. May God bless us. What a friend we have in Jesus Our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, a peace we often a friend. 
life and atonement for sin and open the life gate that all may go in praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people those who are able please do so let us pray our dear heavenly father creator and sustainer of all we are so blessed this sabbath day to honor and worship your name thank you O lord for the privilege of coming to you in prayer to express our thanksgiving for all the blessings you have given unto us during the past week Please, Lord, may you be attentive to our plea. Please forgive us and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us so that we are worthy to receive your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for this Sabbath day that we can rest from our daily undertakings at school, work, and household errands at this time O lord i would like to bring to you all the thanksgiving and supplication of our church family members and friends some of them are sick and they are requested for healing please tender-hearted to their supplication and lay your hands upon them to hasten the pain a lot of them, O Lord, have unspoken requests, and only you, O Lord, knows what is in their heart. Please be kind to their requests, and may you answer them in accordance to your will. May we be faithful and steadfast until the end. We also would like to include the healing of the world, though our existence here on earth is uncertain but we are certain dear lord 
that you will protect us and be our guard to stand firm in our faith. We ask for your loving mercy to take control over us so that the uncertainty that are always within us will be reinstituted with peaceful and grateful heart. I also would like to pray for our speaker today, Pastor Leomar Makaraig. May you anoint his lips so that the message that we will be hearing will be strengthened the connection of our Christian walk with you. May we be filled with the Holy Spirit as we listen to your word. And please forgive us for all the sins that we have committed against you. In Christ's holy name I pray. Amen. Our offering today is for your local church budget. A New York church school fell behind on their payments to the conference. The conference had to set a deadline. We can only give you three more months. If you are not current by March 1st, we cannot reopen the church school in September. The church and school board had an emergency meeting. What can we do? They asked each other. We owe $20,000, and it's almost the 1st of December. We could have a bake sale. We could have a garage sale. Maybe the students could sell Christmas candles. But none of these ideas, nor even all of these ideas together, would raise enough money. Finally, one member suggested... What if we agreed to pledge all unexpected money for the next three months? Perhaps God will send the money. Every Sabbath, the head elder took a couple of minutes to us. Has anyone gotten any unexpected money to donate to the church school debt? The funds and ideas began to build. Unexpected Christmas gift, $250. Your year-end bonus larger than usual, $100. A forgotten refund, $14.50. A tax rebate, $1,200. Large and small, the gifts continued. The treasurer kept careful records but did not announce the exact amount until March 1st. The total of the unexpected money donated to the school debt equaled $20,000. Today, as we give to the church budget, let us remember how God blesses those who will trust God in their giving. We walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for satisfying our every desires and providing all our needs. Your word says that we should give honor to you with the fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and our offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith so that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. May we be filled with the fullness of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Zacchaeus was a very short man. He heard that Jesus was coming to his town. He wanted to see Jesus so badly. But when Jesus came, there were so many people around him that Zacchaeus couldn't see. He jumped and jumped but he still could not see over the people. So Zacchaeus climbed up in a big tree. He thought that he'd be able to hide up there and look down and see Jesus, Jesus. And nobody would know that he was there. Peekaboo! Jesus knew Zacchaeus was in the tree. Zacchaeus thought he was hiding, but peekaboo! Jesus could see him. 
Sometimes we think we're able to hide, too, but we can never hide from Jesus, no matter where we are. Peekaboo, Jesus sees us and he loves us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for always knowing where I am and for taking care of me. Amen. Have you ever heard of a love song that sets the spirit free? Have you ever watched the sunrise and felt you could not breathe? What if it is? What if it's God speaking? Have you ever cried a tear that you could not explain? Have you ever met a stranger who already knew your name? What if it's he? What if it's God speaking? Who how we can hold of us Get our attention to prove is enough He'll do and He'll use Whatever He wants to So tell us I love you Have you ever lost a loved one whom you thought should still be here? Do you know what it feels like to be tangled up in fear? What if it somehow involved? What if it's speaking through it all? Who knows how it got a hold? of us, get our attention to prove it's enough, he'll do and he'll use whatever he wants to, to tell us, I love you, his ways are higher. are better though sometimes strange what could be stranger than God in a manger Get a hold of us Get our attention to prove it's enough Who knows how we get a hold of you Get your attention to prove it's enough He'll do and he'll use whatever he wants to to tell us.
as I love you. God is speaking. I love you. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to our second service uh, this day. <clears throat> this is the uh, continuation of our message last Wednesday and last night, right? So, so this is the third one. And uh, our key text is found in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, and the verse is 6. Let's turn our Bible, 14 of Revelation, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Let us uh, have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, this morning, O oh Lord, we come before your throne of grace to ask your guidance to be with us to bless us as we listen to your word. Thank you for this wonderful message, of, O Lord, of everlasting gospel. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So let us continue our presentation or our study in the book of Romans. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Romans chapter 6. Last night, we studied about Romans chapter 4 and 5. Last Wednesday, we study about Romans chapter 1, 2, and 3. And this day, today, we're going to study Romans chapter 6 and Romans chapter 7 uh, for this message. <clears throat> so let's start with Romans chapter 6. This is about uh, being dead, okay? Dead with Christ or baptized into Christ Jesus' uh, death. Let's read from verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may increase? God forbid. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Do you not know that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death, and just as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Let me stop there for a while, and let me go back again to this uh, wonderful uh, message of Paul here. Because, according to him, uh, we were baptized into Christ Jesus. We were no longer, according to him, uh, continue in sinning. Right? What is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. Okay? So it means that since we were buried with him and crucified with him and raised up with him, we would no longer be slaves of sin because we are new man in Christ Jesus. We are new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because also, according to this passage, uh, we died to sin. And we should no longer live any. We should no longer uh, live in it. Because we died to sin. Because we died to sin. When you look at Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. But we died to sin with Jesus Christ, together with Jesus Christ in his death, okay? And also we resurrect, resurrected with him through his resurrection from the grave, from the dead. That's why through him, okay, with him, According to the Bible, 
He paid the wages of sin. So when we belong to Him, okay, baptized with Him, and raised up with Him, then we, no, we are no longer slaves of sin. That's why when you read your Bible, Romans chapter 6 and the verse is 7, for the one who has died is freed from sin. We are no longer slaves of sin, okay? Sin is not our master anymore. We have a new master that is Jesus Christ. We are not transgressing the law of God anymore, but we are obedient to the law of God. So, through Jesus Christ, okay, through Him, we paid the wages of sin. Through Him. Meaning, He's the one who paid the wages of my sin. And because of that, I accepted Him and buried with Him and resurrected with Him. You can read it in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4 and 5. That is good news, okay? That's why when we die, okay, we just sleep. We just rest because we have resurrection and eternal life in Christ Jesus. But if you don't have eternal life, and if I don't have eternal life, when I die, I sleep as well, okay? I will be resurrected again but not the first resurrection. The second resurrection. Okay? So, let's uh, continue on this uh, message. Verse 11. Uh, verse, verse, let's, let's start with uh, verse 8. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no further dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also consider yourself to be dead to sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Do not yield your members to sin as instrument of, righteous, of unrighteousness, but yield yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead, your bodies to God as instrument of righteousness. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. You see, this is the good news of God, okay? We're no longer slaves of sin, but we decided right now to surrender ourselves to obedience to the righteousness of God. Look at verse 16. Do you not know that to whom you yield yourselves as slaves to obey, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But thanks be to God, for you were slaves of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of teaching to which you were entrusted. And having been uh, freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Paul was simply saying, because you were no longer slaves of sin, okay? Please surrender yourselves as slaves of righteousness or of obedience leading to righteousness. That's why I, I told you before that obedience and faith it's not against each other. It is inseparable. They meet together in the middle. Not only belief, not only obedience, but they meet together in the middle as 
inseparable. Okay? So when we are no longer slaves of sin and we have been uh, united with the death uh, of Christ and resurrected together with Him and seated with Him, okay? In the book of Romans chapter 6, according to Paul, if we surrender ourselves to obedience, we are slaves of the one whom we obey. So we are now slaves of obedience leading to righteousness. That is good news. Can you see here? Okay. Paul explained first the universality of sin. Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 2, and Romans chapter 3. All are guilty before the sight of God. Okay. And then Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 5, he said that there is forgiveness from all your sins. Okay? You can be forgiven from all your sins. You can be righteous because of the obedience of Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you believe that, like the, the, the faith of Abraham and the faith of David, they believe. That Christ can forgive you even though you are, let's say, full of sin, your life. He can cleanse you. He can forgive you. He can do that for you because of Jesus Christ. Because He died for you when you were still sinners. He died for all of us. Okay, remember that uh, Wednesday and Friday? And now in Romans chapter 6, after that, Paul said, because you've been buried with him and resurrected with him and died with him, seated with him, place, according to Romans chapter 6, beginning from verse 16, render yourselves, okay, to obedience leading to righteousness. The result is obedience that leads to righteousness. And because of that, look at verse uh, 18. And having been freed from sin, you became the slaves of righteousness. Verse uh, 19. Look at verse 19, the last part. Even so now, yield your members as slaves to righteousness unto holiness. That's why we obey. That's why we follow God and His commandments. But if people would say, well, I am saved, I can do my own things because I'm always saved. Look at verse 23 again. Hey, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. That is good news. That is everlasting gospel. That is the goodness of God for each and every one of us. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, our righteousness by faith is not the righteousness by faith of the Protestants. It is different. Because for them, righteousness by faith or salvation by faith is this. Once you believe in Christ Jesus, you are saved. No matter what you do in life, you are saved because God predestined you to be saved. Meaning no matter what you do, you are saved. That is not the righteousness by faith of the Bible. The righteousness by faith of the Bible is in the book of Romans. Okay? Let me repeat this again. Chapters 1, 2, and 3, the universality of sin. 4 and 5 is the forgiveness of God. Okay? Romans 6 is about what? After you've been baptized with Christ, death, resurrection, okay? And death and resurrection... You are now encouraged by Paul to render yourselves as, as, as slaves of obedience to righteousness. When you became slaves of righteousness and yield your members as slaves to righteousness, then the end is holiness. Look at verse 19. 
Yield your members as slaves to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the slaves of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit did you have then from the things of which you are now ashamed? The result of those things is death. But now, having been freed from sin and having become slaves of God, you have fruit unto holiness and the end is eternal life. So render yourselves as slaves of obedience leading to righteousness. Now let's go to chapter 7. This is about what? The analogy of marriage. Okay? When you look at the problem of sin in the inner man, verse 7, what shall we, they, what, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. I did not know sin except through the law. I would not have known coveting if the law had not said, You shall not covet. But sin taking opportunity through the commandment produced in me all kinds of coveting. For apart from the law, sin is dead. I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was intended for life, Proved to be death in me, for sin taking opportunity through the commandment deceived me and killed me through it. So then, the law is holy, the commandment is holy, just and good. Therefore, has that which is good become death to me? Which is that good? The commandment. Therefore, has that which is good, that is the commandment, became death to me? God forbid. Rather, sin, that it might be be shown to be sin by working dead in me through that which is good, through that which is the commandment, so that sin to the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. You understand this? The message of Paul here? What is the function of the commandments of the law? To expose sin. To reveal sin. So that when, when you look at the mirror, okay, you see yourself as uh, sinners, you come to Christ for your forgiveness, for your salvation, for righteousness. In order for sin to be more exceedingly sinful, God used the commandment to show the exceedingly sinfulness of sin. And that's, that is why the law is good, the law is holy, just and good. And look at verse 14. The law is spiritual. I am carnal, sold under sin. Okay? And then he said in verse 16, I agree with the law that it is good. And then verse 21, uh, 22, for I delight in the law of God. Okay? Okay? But there is another law that he mentioned, that is the law of sin and death. But the law of God is holy, just, and good because uh, through the knowledge of the law is also the knowledge of sin. And that's why I said earlier, when people heard us preaching about the law of God, uh, they don't want to hear it. Why? Why? Because the moment they hear it, they become guilty. And Christians today, they don't want to feel the guilt of sin. They just want to be to have a you know a happy a happy service, joyous service. Uh, you know, uh, when you feel that you are good, then you are holy. That is not what the Bible says. The Bible said that. Through the law comes the knowledge of sin. Once you knew that it was sin, you went to God and asked for forgiveness. That is the function of all of this. So it points to God always. That's why Paul says, hey, this is the obedience of faith. 
Render yourselves as slaves of obedience leading to righteousness. And we can only do that, do that, if we are in the faith. Look at Romans 3.31 once again. Romans 3.31 says, Do we then make the law void through faith? God forbid. Instead, we establish the law. So if we are in the faith, we are actually establishing the law. Because when we are in faith, then God gives us power to obey Him and His commandments. That is our righteousness by faith. It is a total whole package. Salvation from sin and obedience to God that leads to righteousness. Now you have you have the big picture there uh, about the plan of God. Okay, it is not only to save sinners, but enable for them to obey Him for His glory, for the glory of God, for the glory of His name, for the glory of His kingdom. We are His witnesses to this world that there will be a group of people in the last days that actually giving glory to him. This is all connected. When Paul says in Corinthians, okay, chapter 6 and chapter 3, that you are the temple of God. Therefore, glorify God in your body. You see? This is the will of God for us, and that is why I, I accepted the teachings of the Bible. And every time I read the Bible, okay, this is what we believe. We don't have creed. This is our creed. Our creed is the Bible, right? But if you want to know our uh, fundamental beliefs that we believe, okay, based on the Bible, you will see in our book. But we don't have creed like others. We have this creed. The Bible is our creed. And when you look at the Bible, you will see here in Romans chapter 6 and in Romans chapter 7 that, the, that, that Paul is actually delight and agree with the law that it is good. Because what? The law exposes sin. So, if we really want to continue here in Romans chapter 8, we are now in Romans chapter 8, okay? Look at this verse, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So, who are those people that doesn't have condemnation? Those who are in Christ Jesus and those who walk not according to the flesh. Those are the people that doesn't have condemnation. Why these people don't walk in the flesh? When you look at chapter 8, verse 7, <clears throat> Let me read from other translation here. 8-7 of Romans. Okay. Now let's start with verse 6. To be carnally minded, that is fleshly, okay? Flesh. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Is spiritually minded. When you look at, again, chapter 7, right? And you look at verse 14, we know that the law is spiritual. So if you are carnal and the law is spiritual, you are at war with each other. Look at verse uh, 
6 there. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, or hostile, enmity, hostile against God. Why? For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Why it is not subject to the law of God? Because carnal, if the carnal mind is not spiritual, okay, Let's say, for example, I have a carnal mind and the law is, is, is spiritual. The law is, is spiritual, okay? Romans 7 and the verse is 14. We know that the law is, is spiritual. Now, I am carnal. Uh, I have uh, hostility with the law because the law is, is spiritual. That's why in here, the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then the flesh, so then they are in the flesh, cannot please God. That's why our righteousness by faith is different from the rest. This is the righteousness faith of the Bible. Okay? We don't have condemnation, okay? Because we are in Christ Jesus and we walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Meaning, we are in harmony with the law of God. We are not hostile to the law of God. Because again, the message of Paul is what? Render yourselves as slaves of obedience unto righteousness. Okay? We establish the law by faith. The law is holy, just, and good. The law is spiritual. Right? So, uh, we are now uh, no condemnation because we are in Christ Jesus and we don't walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That is good news, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? So then, look at verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be the Spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. This is the assurance of our eternal life. The Spirit of God that dwells in us. Look at verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Let me read uh, that verse in other translation, uh, eight eleven of Romans. Quicken or made alive, okay? Uh, Romans 8, the verse is 11. It says there, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit, that lives in you. Okay? If the Spirit, okay, lives in us, according to the Bible, and that is good news, that is the assurance of our salvation, the Spirit that lives in us. So, if you want again to, to read verse 11, if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit that lives in you. My dear brothers and sisters, okay? Uh, when you look at verse 16, the Spirit Himself bears witness that we are children of God. Verse 17, if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Praise the Lord that 
We are now heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We have the assurance of salvation. Why? Because the salvation of God is now complete. We no longer walk in the flesh. We no longer uh, serve sin. We no longer uh, live in sinning. But we became slaves uh, of righteousness, of obedience leading to righteousness. Okay? Christ died for us. He saved us. And we don't have any condemnation in Christ Jesus our Lord because uh, we don't walk in the flesh and we are in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this is good news, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So, uh, yes, we have still weaknesses, okay? But this is another good news. Even though we have weaknesses, look at verse 26 of Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmities. Let me read that in other translation. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know all that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. This is again good news. Even though we have these weaknesses and sometimes we don't know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit intercedes for us in our behalf. Let us praise the Lord because of His wonderful plan for each and every one of us. So because of this, Look at uh, 31, okay, up to 35. Let's, let's read this one. 34, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, yes, who is risen, who is also at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us, okay? Jesus Christ also intercedes for us, okay? First Timothy 4, Timothy 2, you will also read that in verse 4, I think, verse 5, okay? Because the context here is in the right hand of God. He's the one that intercedes for us. But when it comes to our prayer and weaknesses, it is the Holy Spirit that intercedes for us. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For your sake, we are all killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities, nor powers, neither things present nor things to come, neither the height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So the theme of Paul in Romans 5 and also in Romans chapter 8 is about the love of God. If we are in the love of God, no one can separate us. Right? No one can separate us from the love of God. So dwell your hearts and minds and your life on the love of Jesus Christ. Soak your life in the love of Jesus Christ and you will see the difference. You will become more humble. You will be, uh, you will be more forgiving Christian. 
okay? Uh, you will be a mature Christian. Your, your horizon, your, your minds will be different. When you look at things, you will always see good things because you are saturated by the love of God, by the love of Christ. So the more you dwell on the love of Christ, the more you will obey Him, the more you will adore Him, the more you will praise Him, and the more you will trust Him. That is the everlasting gospel. Again, the gospel of the Bible is faith and obedience go hand in hand together for the glory of God in order for us to understand the height, the depth of His love for us. Can you imagine if our lives is only saturated and driven by the love of Christ, no matter what we hear, no matter what we see, no matter what we uh, hear from other people, this thing and such things, and this is the mark of the beast, and this and so on and so forth. No one can separate us from the love of God. You see, I, what, I, what I notice uh, during this pandemic, right? People are not mature in their faith. You know, during the 1960s and 70s in the Philippines, you know, Adventists would say, oh, television is the mark of the beast. If you have television, you have the mark of the beast. That is 60s and 70s. Right? 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Oh, it's the barcode. If you have the barcode, that is the mark of the beast. You know, I, 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 I told those people, do you buy soap? You look at the, look at your soap. It has barcode, safeguard. It has a barcode. Toothpaste, it has barcode. Your t-shirt, it has barcode. Your everything, it has barcode. Hey, why do you buy those things? You mean you support the mark of the beast? And now what, what? Pandemic. What is the mark of the beast right now? Oh, the mark of the beast is what? Pfizer, the vaccine. This is the mark of the beast. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, if you know the love of God and the message of God in the Bible, right? No one will separate us from the love of God. Because if you love God and you love Jesus Christ, even though here comes the mark of the beast in the Sunday law, so be it. No one can separate me because of the love of Jesus Christ. He gave himself for me. And because of his righteousness, I decided to obey or to, to give my life in obedience to him for the glory of the Father. Because I am now changed by his mercy. Changed by his love. I am ready to give my life for him because I know when I lose my life for him, I gain eternal life. And that is good news. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope that you focus your life on the love of Christ, on his righteousness, on his obedience, and his grace and his love. Dwell on those things. And I'm sure that you and I, if we're going to do that, we will be a mature Christian. We're no longer slaves of sin. We're no longer slaves of unrighteousness. We are slaves of God and walk not after the flesh. Therefore, we don't have any condemnation. We are heirs of God and joint heir with Christ. Praise the Lord. Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, this day, O oh Lord, thank you for the love that you have bestowed and revealed to us. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the, the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for the gift of righteousness. Thank you for the obedience 
of the one man, Jesus Christ, that by him we can be righteous in your sight, O Lord. And because of that love, Heavenly Father, we surrender ourselves to you and to him and to the Holy Spirit so that we can have a new life and we can walk in a newness of life so that we can surrender obedience that leads to righteousness for the glory of your name and for the glory of your kingdom. Saturate ourselves, Heavenly Father, with your love so that we cannot separate from you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful, everlasting gospel. In it, your righteousness revealed from faith to faith. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus. No language my rapture can tell I know that the light of his presence With me doth continually dwell Redeemed, redeemed Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Redeemed, redeemed His child and forever Blessed Redeemer, I think of Him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is a theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed. Spirits made perfect at home with the Lord. I shall be redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Let us bow our heads for our benediction. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, put your faith in the Lord and trust Him always. Because our God shall supply all our needs according to His riches and glory by Jesus Christ. Now to God and our Father be glory forever and ever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.